Right, today we're looking at developer from Hack the Box, but we're actually looking at authentication from developer because uh, this box is set up that a developer is a CTF platform. It's kind of like a little mini Hack the Box. Um, and inside of it is a bunch of these challenges and we have to actually solve at least one of the challenges to keep going on the box. So um, I'm gonna show how to solve all eight in my blog post, but I thought uh, authentication is the hardest one. It's the only 20 point challenge. And I thought it might be fun to dive in and show it in a video. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Um, so here's, this is the developer platform. Um, there's, interestingly, uh, the machines are coming soon. They don't exist yet. Um, but also then, uh, you know, the web, there's no web ones, uh, but there is some forensic challenges, some reversing challenges, some pwn, a pwn challenge, a couple crypto challenges. So under reversing here, under authentication, the only 20 point challenge, uh, I've developed a new authentication mechanism using Rust. Can you reverse my password? And so we will download uh, the file right here. Let's see, what do they call it? Authentication.zip. Uh, and let's jump in. So we'll move this from downloads, authentication.zip. Oops, gonna need to tell it where to here. And we will unzip authentication. And uh, the file we get is authenticate. Here we go. So it's a 64-bit executable. Um, it is not stripped, which is nice. Um, and the prompt did mention it was using Rust, so we'll certainly expect to see that as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open it up in Ghidra. Um, so I don't even have an active project here. So I'm not sure I've ever showed this before, but you, you good new project. Um, a couple different ways you can go about this. You could just have one project you use like for all hack the box stuff. Um, lately, I've been doing it where I will save uh, for each for each. Uh, machine, for example, I will create a project or sorry, if I'm shooting through an authenticate here, um, I'll create a project here. And so I create in the folder for authenticate, I'll create a Ghidra folder. Uh, and then I'll select that as the project directory and the project name can be authenticate and save that. And then you got to come up here again and import file. And we will let's see, come up here. And where am I? Authenticate, authenticate. And so we'll import it. And this is small, but you don't, doesn't matter. You don't have to read that. I'll have to see if I can make the, the text bigger on the browser. So we'll grab it and drag it up here into the dragon. The dragon will say, do you want to analyze it? We'll say yes. We'll take with the defaults because that seems good. Uh, well, we have done this before. Where do we go to um, make the text bigger? Tools, Windows, Help, let's see. I'm going to pause the video for a second and uh, figure out how to make the recording bigger or the text bigger. Okay, I'm back. I found it. So if you come up in here under uh, edit tool options, uh, decompiler display, we can come down here and somewhere here, font. And let's make this size something big for make it visible for you all. Uh, and then similarly under listing display, make the bump this up to 18 and apply. So now we've got real big text here. Uh, okay, we'll come down here to functions and we'll jump into our main. Um, now, this is interesting. I'm not super familiar with Rust, but one thing that I, when I first started here, I kind of stumbled through this. And I thought, okay, what am I dealing with here? So um, it's calling main main. So, okay, that's interesting. So let's jump into main main. Um, and you can say, well, look, where is this? Um, it's actually, if you come over here to filter and you type in main, you can see it shows up here under functions, but then also down here under namespaces is the main namespace. So let's get rid of the filter and come here. See, we actually have a handful of functions in here. We have main, we have validate, we have check password, and we have authenticate. Um, and so if we look at main, 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 um, one of the things about when you do something like in Rust or maybe even like Go, you're going to get these kind of like a lot of really kind of verbose stuff. And that's because of the, there's a lot of um, things that they're doing in the background to make things memory safe. And so you kind of just have to ignore a lot of this junk um, that's going on. Um, but we can see somehow, you know, so here's failed to read input. Um, we try to read a string. So here's enter your password to proceed. Um, we create that argument and then we print the arguments. Um, and then somehow here's the call to check password. Um, and local 48 is where that's going. Um, so this must be where we read in the, so we can, you know, let's see. Um, rename variable user password. Um, 
Cool, and that's passed into check passwords. Let's jump into there. Um, check passwords. So we're coming down here. And again, there's a lot of junk in here, but I'm just sort of looking for what's interesting. Um, so interestingly enough, if bvar and if the low bit of bvar is equal to zero, which basically means false, uh, you're not authorized to proceed, print it again, blah, blah, blah. Or maybe, or maybe that's just the end of it right there. Um, sets into arguments and calls it somehow else authenticated. Um, so we can see right here, this is where we want to be, is we want to be, this this bvar1 is calling equals on these two inputs. Now we know, let's come here, param1, let's rename that to user password. And then let's see if we can find, so auvar2, how do we get to, how do we get back to one of these two? It's local 70 equals local 68 equals validate local 68. Um, so validate's doing something to generate one of these passwords. And then let's see what local 50 is extra. So again, this is not great, this decompilation. Um, but none of this really matters because what I've now got is I want to see what happens at this. The, I know this is important right here. This equal, equals, it's checking two, two buffers to see if they're equal. And so I can see, okay, that happens at uh, this address right here, uh, 01091C3. So I'm actually gonna jump over here into um, GDB. And so I can do G, uh, GDB authenticate, and we can do info functions. And there's a lot of functions in here. Um, A lot of stuff. Let's see. So here's the main stuff we were looking at earlier. And so you can see, you know, main is at 9360. Um, so we can even look at, we can, let's see if we can disassemb this. I don't actually don't know if this will work or not. Uh, disassemb main check password. Yeah, so it doesn't like that. It doesn't like the, col the colons. Can we do it that way? Yeah, okay, we can do it that way. Um, and we know that we are looking for, it's just prettier to see over here, 1C3. It's right up above, right up a little bit. Right here, this call is some sort of compare partial equals on the on these strings. Um, so we're gonna put a breakpoint right at this, at this point. So we're gonna do um, break, oh, let's see if this works. Plus one OX, 1C3. Oh, cool. I think that worked. So let's run now. Um, and big sev. That's not what I expected to happen. Uh, let's run. Quit. Let's try this again. We're going to GDB authenticate. This time we're going to break it main. We're going to run to it first. Um, and now let's see if we can put that breakpoint in. There we go. That looks better. Um, now if we continue to there. Oh, we're six seven again. Um, that's not what I was expecting. So this works. Okay. Um, run. Okay, that works. We break main, run. Um, let's try let's try it a little bit differently this time. Um, I know I want to break at this address right here, and instead of three sixty, we want one C three. Now we will continue. Okay, not the password. And here we are. I don't know why that wasn't working before, but we seem to be working now. Um, and so here we got the flag. Um, you can see right here that the guest arguments to this call, which it, it's hard to see because the you know this stuff is so big and there's all these junk uh, variable names in here. But um, you can see right here the guest arguments. Uh, it's passing in not the password, and it's passing in uh, DHTB developer HTTP risky rusty business. Um, so we've got the flag. Um, something I actually haven't done before, but we should probably take a peek at. What is what happens? So when you call authenticated, um, what does it do? 
you are unauthorized. You, oh, you have successfully authenticated. Um, okay, so this function doesn't actually do anything. Um, and I guess that's the point is if I can, um, let's see if I grab this, put out of here, if I run authenticate, if I print the flag in, it says you've been successful. So uh, you don't, you know, that's all. It, it, it's a classic challenge of, you know, authentic getting past this if statement is not the goal. The goal, you know, the goal is to find the thing that gets past the if statement because otherwise I could just come in and edit the flow. So um, anyway, uh, this has been uh, quickly reversing a relatively easy binary in Rust, um, but because it's in Rust, it's kind of a pain and it's uh, not maybe the kind of disassembly you're used to seeing. Um, so thank you so much for sticking around to the end and uh, we'll talk to you next time.